Hello everyone. Uh, magandang araw sa inyo dyan. Good afternoon, Meng. Good evening, Meng. <laughs> so, I emailed to everyone the uh, what uh, slide that we're going to use today. And I think I include some short snapshots about it. And by the end of our meeting today, we are done uh, with uh, mass spectrometry. So we, we just try to simplify this uh, method. So as I have mentioned uh, last week when we met, we, uh, I, I, I know that there are three mass spec uh, system when I went there two, uh, three years ago, 2018, and I met all of those who are using this uh, mass spec. So we have one in Apex Center, okay, uh, being used by the Pascual Laboratory under uh, Dr. Uh, Padolina, the young Padolina, okay. I'm just trying to share my slide. Okay, I'm done. So, burn a book. Okay, not yet. Sure. Okay, so as we have discussed last time about uh, mass spec, okay. We tell that it's an analytical uh, method that helps identify the amount and types of chemicals present in a sample by measuring the mass to charge. So you, you, you will see it like this one, okay? The mass to charge uh, ratio and abundance of the gas phase ion. So what we have usually in a result in the so-called mass spectrum or mass spectra, we could look at the mass to charge ions here and the abundance that it has. So usually from lower uh, molar mass to higher molar mass, okay, you will see which is the, the most abundant here. So what we really have here is the so-called plot of the ion signal as a function of the mass to charge uh, ratio. So what you have here is the molecular or the, uh, <clears throat> the mass of the molecular ion and fragments that are used to determine the elemental composition or tinatawag na isotopic signature, okay? And as I've told you last time, there are uh, two main uses of the mass spec, either for quantitation or identification or yung tinatawag nating structure elucidation okay so in the quantitation you can have uh, the target and the non-target uh, compound okay so you want to determine how much of that compound is present okay in identification through the use of these so-called fragments you try to identify the structure that you have. So if we're going to use a uh, uh, look at the mass spectrometry, uh, the main thing that you need is the so-called ionizing chemical compounds. Okay, so that's the main challenge that they have in developing this uh, mass spec. I think the essay by uh, John Penn is how to make the elephant fly. Okay, that's the description that they have when they develop the electrospray ionization. Okay, because you have to have a system wherein when you fragment the molecules, okay, you should be able to see okay, uh, this ion form. And since this is December, mass spec, we could say, is a Nobel Prize uh, winning technology. So I said December because they, they award uh, the Nobel Prize usually during December. And I think uh, there's an issue right now with the, the, the first Filipino who won the Nobel Prize, okay, uh, Maria Ressa. So this is the time 
that they go to Sweden to get their award. So the one who got the uh, Nobel Prize for MASPEC is way back in 2002. So it's for the development of two soap ionization technology. So John Penn for the electrospay technology and Konichi Tanaka, okay, for the sorb laser, uh, soap laser desorption technology. So it's really, we could say, a very good technology. Okay. And I think the advent of mass spectrometry make analytical methods or the development of analytical methods uh, better. Okay. Be be before they just concentrate on HPLC and GC. But with the option of using mass spec as a detector, they were able to develop more uh, sensitive analytical methods. So if we're going to look at the basic considerations that we have here, okay, uh, elements are usually identified by their mass and mass spec okay, is an analytical method to measure either the molecular or atomic weight. Okay, so if you want to use mass spec, let's say for a metal, they have their uh, own mass spec yung tinatawag nating ICP. I don't know if you heard this thing already. Are you familiar with uh, what ICP is? Anyone? Narinig nyo na ba yun? ICP MS? Is this the first time you, you, you heard the term ICP? inductively coupled uh, plasma mass spectrometry. So yan yung parang kapalit no? AAS. Uh, I'm not sure. Ma, meron na ba sa Pinas nito? <laughs> Oo, meron. Meron na po. Uh, pero I ICP OES eh. Ah, uh, hindi pa mass spec. <laughs> Oo, optical emissions. At meron din uh, ICP MS, siguro sa Diliman. Meron. Pero sa UPLD, ano, ICP, OES yung unit nila sa soil science. Mm -hmm. Oh, talaga. Oh. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it, it Pero used... sa, sa UPLD, yun lang. <laughs> yun pa lang ang ICP, OES. Pero sa Diliman, hindi ko maraming units na meron yeah. sa ICP. May, may ICP, MS sila doon. Because uh, uh, if you have this, this is, uh, we could say, definitely uh, more expensive than an AAS. So that means it's also more sensitive than AAS. So this covers the one that is uh, in the elemental analysis, okay? Because we could say mass spec covers everything. But if you look at specifically the elements, lalo na yung mga metals, okay? They, they use their exclusively uh, ICP MS because the MS that we use is either one with LC or one that is attached with GC. So that is covered uh, to analyze this, what we call uh, glue, uh, the molecular compounds, okay? So you can use the so-called low molecular weight and also the so-called big molecules. My experience is on uh, low molecular weight, okay? Big molecules is if you have the so-called protein, you mga biomolecules, so carbohydrates. So what they do is they look at the fragments when they break it down. So there's a, there is usually signature fragments for these uh, big molecules. And and today we're going to look at the different ionization uh, sources, uh, mass analyzer. So you will be introduced to the world of what we call mass spec. But I'm not sure if I'm right if. Because when I was there, I know that the, the three LCMS system we have in LB, Diliman, and Manila. So I'm not sure if they uh, have additional one. So in, in UPLB, it's in the Pascual. Uh, uh, the one that they have in APEC. The Diliman is under Dr. Yasunio. Okay? And in Manila, is uh, under Dr. Uh, Frank. 
general day. Okay? So, it's a very good method. Yung nga lang, expensive din siya. It's a high maintenance thing. Okay? Uh, I was able to have first-hand uh, experience using LCMS, both the Q-top, no, not, not the Q-top, the, the quantitation and the structure elucidation part. Right now, we have a GCMS at, at pace. Okay? So, if you're going to look at the masses in mass spectrometry, ang tinitingnan talaga dyan, yung average mass, okay, which is just uh, what we could uh, obtain by summing the average atomic masses of the constituents element. So kapag meron kang water, okay, all you need to do is look at the molar mass of this. And you're going to the, uh, see fragments that gives you corresponding molar mass of water, like 18. Okay? Tapos meron din tinatawag na monoisotopic mass. So these are uh, what we call based on the isotopes. So we all know, for instance, in hydrogen, how many isotopes hydrogen has? Anyone? Ilang uh, isotopes meron ng hydrogen? Di ba meron tayong H1? H2, which is deuterium, and H3, which is the tritium. Okay? So what, what the monoisotopic mass is just the sum of the masses of the atoms in a molecule using the unbound ground uh, state rest mass of the principal or the most abundant isotope for each element instead of the isotopic mass of the range. So if you have a monoisotopic uh, mass, usually you express it in unified or atomic mass, uh, unified atomic mass unit. Okay? Now, meron din tinatawag natin yung accurate mass. So this involves this so-called high-resolution mass spectrometer. Okay? So this is an experimentally determined mass that allows the chemical composition to be determined. So you use this if you want okay, uh, to determine the exact structure yung compound. Maybe the compound is unknown, some sort of a metabolite that was formed when a chemical is released in the environment or reacted with some enzymes in our body. Okay. So the way that they look at it for molecules uh, with mass below five, uh, 200, 5 ppm accuracy is often sufficient to uniquely determine the elemental composition. Okay. So if we're going to look at the fundamental steps in any MS procedure, okay? So ito, ito yung, we could say, the summary of the mass spec, okay? So you might have a sample, whether it is solid, liquid, or gas. The main thing for you to do with this is to make it ionized, okay? Remember, the, the, the way that we determine is mass to charge ion. So how, when you ionize it, you just what we call charge it, okay? So the ionization of your sample can result to what? Either a positive or a negative ion. So yan yung parang uh, tinatawag natin challenge when they try to develop the mass spec method. How are you going to analyze your sample? Okay. And in our last meeting, we have the uh, what we call introduce to you the different part of uh, what we call mass spec. Okay. So meron tayong kinatawag na anong part ng mass spec yun? Anyone? No umaten. So we have the sample and we have the so-called ion source, okay? So you have to take into consideration during this ionization, yung tinatawag nating molecules ng sample natin, okay? Because most likely it will break into charged fragments. So that depends on soft versus hard methods. Are you familiar with this by now? class 
So pag sinasabi nating soft, yung fragmentation niya hindi masyadong ano, yung tinatawag nating uh, magpo-form talaga siya ng smaller molecular fragments of smaller molecular mass compared to the hard na talagang ibe-break niya yung pwede niyang i-break to form a lot of fragments. And we will discuss about this uh, ionization methods as we go on. Okay? So once we ionize there, this is where the separation takes place. And the separation based to March to charge uh, ratio, the M over C. Okay? And the way that the ions are detected, these are by mechanism cap capable of detecting charged particles. So yun yung tinatawag na electron multiplier. Okay? So i-arrange mo sila according to the mass to charge ion. So maybe from the lowest to the highest mass to charge ratio. And depending on the abundance, the results are going to be displaced as a spectra of the relative abundance of the, uh, as a function of the mass to charge ratio. So lalabas na yan na ganito. So this one has a higher molar mass compared to this. This one has a higher molar mass. This is our higher mass to charge ratio. And here, we could say that it has a higher relative abundance similar to this one and that one. Okay. So the identification is done by correlating non-masses to the identified masses or through a characteristic fragmentation pattern. So I gave you an example, uh, the tetracycline that I identified. So we have a, a four, four, five, remember? And then it break down to give 427. So it's just the loss of what? A hydroxyl group or water, okay? So that's what you uh, need to look at in identifying your uh, unknown compound, okay? So we might ask ourselves, so, how does the ionization work? So ano yung tinatawag nating mga ion sources? Okay? So if we're going to look at these ion sources, uh, uh, these are the common ones. So before the sample can be uh, analyzed in terms of mass, it must be ionized in the ion source. So if you have a gas system, it could be an EI or CI. Okay, so pwede uh, electron ionization o yung tinatawag na chemical ionization. Okay, so if we're going to look at this uh, ionization as we go on later, i-discuss ko sa inyo how this, uh, what we call ionization works in terms of electron ionization and chemical ionization. Okay, uh, in some, you can also include, if it involves the gas phase, the so-called photo-ionization. I, I hope wala sabihin yung, ano eh, yung acronym niya eh. <laughs> okay? And then if you have a liquid sample, that, like, that, like in LC, either you can use the so-called electrospray ionization, which is ESI, that's the most common one if you're using LCMS, or you can also use APCI, the atmospheric pressure chemical ionization. In some, they also have the so-called atmospheric pressure photo ionization, okay? You can also use the so-called multi-mode ionization. And here in the liquid sample introduction, kasama dito yung sa ICP. Okay? Now, yung MALDI na tinatawag dito, yung Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization, although it's a liquid sample introduction, usually ang ano, ano talaga dyan is solid phase. Okay? Meron kang matrix na ginagamit. So, ang nilalagay dun, yung sample mo, mapupunta dun sa matrix. Now, yung matrix na yun, usually, magpo-form siya into solid. Okay? So yeah, yung uh, tinatawag natin different ion source that we're going to discuss one, one by one as we go on. So if we're going to look at ionization uh, in terms of polarity, okay? So the polarity of the analyte determines the ionization source. So if it's mostly nonpolar, mostly 
yung GCMS ang gagamitin mo. Okay, so if it involves water analysis, GCMS cannot be used for that. Okay, because water is a, a polar substance. Okay, and included in this, uh, what we call the uh, non-polar at uh, low molecular weight, GCMS, so if the molecular weight is a little bit higher, you can use the atmospheric pressure photo ionization, yung APPI. Okay. Now, if it's uh, very polar, okay, you can use either the APCI, some of the APPI, and ESI. So as you could see, ESI, you can use it even for the high uh, molecular weight substances. Pwede siyang gamitin sa, sa proteomics. Yan yung inaano nila ngayon, eh, yung fragmentation, the so-called nomics, nomics that I discussed to you last time. Okay. Now, if we go on how these uh, ion sources work, so if we look at the electron ionization, so you can have an electron impact. Okay. So the way that it go, since this is uh, electron impact is well established and the most common ionization in GC, so the molecules would exit the gas chromatogram. So I ano natin yung knowledge natin sa GC. Okay? So the molecules are ex uh, exiting the gas, they, they are bombarded by this electron beam. So when, when you're bombarded by uh, an electron beam, what happened? Since you are applying energy there, you're removing an electron from the molecule. So once you remove an electron, it becomes a charged ion because an electron is also charged uh, particle. Okay? So if you're going to put it in methanol, you, you have the one electron, okay? So you're going to form there a charged molecular ion, okay? So the, the EI or electron ionization typically produce single charge molecular ions and fragment ions, usually the smaller parts of the original molecules. And they are used for structure elucidation. So if you have, let's say, a methanol, the fragment that you could see is a CH3 plus and an OH. So in so mass spectrum, you will be able to mass to charge na CH3, we could say around 15, 16, and an OH, which is also around 15 and 16. So you could say it's yung abundance niyan. Okay. So the generated mass spectra, the Earth spectrum plots the signal intensity at the given mass to charge ratio. So if you're going to look at how this operate, okay? So this usually involves high temperature, yung tinatawag nilang interface, okay? So ito yung ionization chamber ng GCMS. So you are going to introduce the sample through the column. So ito yung GC part mo, and then this to yung mass spec. So pagka-introduce mo doon, papasok yan doon sa ionization chamber. So dito na siya ma-ionize. And once it's ionized, it goes to the analyzer chamber. Okay? But during that time, bago siya pumasok doon, meron kang heater or uh, what we call sensor assembly. Okay? So parang bag, ano nila, yung pagpasok uh, niya doon, uh, yung conversion ng sample mo into an ion. Okay? So there's a heater there and then a sensor. So once you ionize there, so meron kang tinatawag na analyzer, yan, yan na yung mag-determine kung ano yung mass to charge ratio na mag-perform once na na-ionize yung sample mo. Okay. So yun yung pinaka basic form no si sa EI. Okay? So it's just the use of electron to ionize your sample. Now the other one yun yung tinatawag nating chemical ionization. So if it's a chemical ionization, so that means there's a chemical that is involved. Okay? If uh, electron ionization is direct energy transfer process with electron kinetic energy deposited directly into an analyte molecule. Yung CI naman, 
it's an indirect process involving an intermediate chemical reagent. Okay. And this is usually true in the so-called positive chemical ionization. So in the PCI, yung ion sources mo, it's filled with a reagent gas which is ionized to create reagents ions which react with the analyte. So ano yung reagent gases na yan? It could be methane, isobutane, or ammonia. Okay? So what happened here? Yung ina-apply yung reagent gas, it determines the ionization and the fragmentation behavior of the analyte. Okay? So if you have what we call methane there, so these are the possible uh, reaction that can happen. So yung methane mo ma-ionize, mag-perform ng CH4+, CH3+, and CH2+. Okay? And then those ions that form there, they can react with one another and you can see the fragments that will come out out of this. Okay? So, so, so yan yung, we could say, two ionization method doon sa gas chromatography or we could say gas sample. So question? Metanong between the two ion sources before we go with the LC. So LC naman, I think to simplify the thing, you have to look at the uh, sample consideration. So saan applicable yung electrospray, saan applicable yung atmospheric pressure, uh, chemical ionization, at saan applicable yung atmospheric pressure photo ionization. Okay? So in terms of volatility, you can use ESI if your sample is not volatile. Okay? For APCI and APPI, there's some requirement of volatility. Okay? And then, uh, in terms of label or thermally label sample, uh, I would say uh, AESI is applicable for the thermally label analytes. Ano ibig sabihin ng label? Anyone? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Narinig nyo na ba yan? What does it mean? So, so, so preferred technique for a thermally labile uh, analyze. So this is the one. Look, look at the thing. The, the other term for you in the APCI is APII is, is thermally stable. So I could say if it's a labile, that's the uh, opposite okay, of stable. So stability. So we could say this is the one that's easily changed. So ESI ang um, pwede mong uh, gamitin kung yung nature ng sample mo uh, heat sensitive. Okay? So change yung, tumaas lang yung temperature, pwedeng mag-change na siya, pwedeng mag-fragment na siya. Okay? So another consideration that you can look to is, uh, we could say, the phase. So ESI is only applicable if the ions form in solution. So that means in the liquid phase. Now, APCI and APPI, uh, they usually form in the gas phase. So in fact, we could say itong APCI directly, ano lang yan yung CI. Okay? At yung APPI, yan yung third na ano dun, yung EICI, tapos yung third itong uh, sa photo ionization. Okay? Now, another thing that uh, you can look at is the uh, charge ions that form. So usually, if you have an ESI, you can form multiply, uh, multi, uh, uh, multiple charge ions. Pero doon sa APCI and APPI, usually they just form single, singly charged ions. Okay. Now many compounds will ionize well using the three sources. 
Now, uh, APCI and APPI uh, can ionize molecules that are too nonpolar for ESI to ionize. So if you're going to look earlier here, take your sample. If the polarity is your sample, it's a little bit nonpolar, mas covered siya ng APPI and then APCI. But if your sample is too polar, ESI yung magkukover sa kanya. Okay? Remember that. Okay? So what other things that we need to consider when we work with this three ionization source? So usually sa LCMS mo yan makikita eh. Okay? If you have an ESI, usually the ions in the solution. Example, yung uh, catecholamine. Okay? Sulfate conjugate and quaternary amines. Now, if you have an APCI, it covered compounds of intermediate molecular weight and polarity. So if you have the PAH, the PCBs, the fatty acids, the phthalates, and the alcohols. Okay, so immediate, intermediate molecular weight and polarity. Now for the APPI, Usually, it covers the intermediate molecular weight and intermediate to low polarity. So, kasama pa rin yung PAH, PCBs, fatty acid, phthalates, and the alcohols. Now, in terms of the heteroatoms that they covered, I think all of them can analyze heteroatoms. So, when you have these heteroatoms, they contain other what we call multiple atoms aside from the hydrocarbons. Okay. And the main advantage of the ESI, I think, is something to do with the so called big molecules. Okay. So you can uh, use ESI for compounds that are, we could say, multiple charges in solution, like the proteins, the peptides, and the oligonucleides, okay? So proteomics, okay, na diniscuss natin uh, last time. Now, both the APCI and the APP, APPI, usually they are compounds that are too nonpolar for uh, response from the ESI. So most LCMS, okay, I, I would say has this uh, ESI as their uh, what we call ion source. Okay, now some you can include this so called uh, APCI. In the lab where uh, Dr. Migo and I work, the LCMS that we have there, we just changed the source. So most of the time we use the ESI. I, I remember using uh, APCI one time and then I, I don't like the results. So I said ESI na lang, okay, because ESI covered uh, more molecules compared. The, compared to the so-called uh, APCI, okay? And how it works, usually lahat ng ion source parang pareho lang yung ano nila eh, yung schematics eh, okay? You introduce the sample and then you're going to find ways to, uh, we could say, ionize that thing. So ang difference lang dito si, sa, sa LCMS is makikita mo yung tinatawag nating uh, liquid. Okay? So here, in the electrospray, so this is a soft ionization, uh, ionization technique that was developed by John Penn. Just siya yung nag-quote nag ng, uh, if you're doing ESI, you let the elephant fly. Okay? So th the way he described this is you let the big molecules fly. Okay? Y yung description niya, there's a big molecule like an elephant. So the way that you have uh, the electrospray, meron kang uh, inlet. So dyan papasok yung sample mo. And when the LC influent is put there, it is sprayed or nebulized. So ano ba yung nebulizer? Anong ginagawa niya? They form into an aerosol, right? If you're asthmatic, you have a nebulizer. So, so what happened here, okay? Pag na-nebulize na yung sample mo, they form into an aerosol, okay? it goes to this chamber. 
at atmospheric pressure in the presence of a strong electrostatic field and heated dry gas. So mataas talaga yung temperature dyan. Okay? And aside from the temperature, meron kang high voltage dyan and sometimes high pressure. Okay? So the electrostatic field occurs between the nebulizer, which is uh, at ground in this design, and the capillary, which is at high voltage. So what happened, your suitable molecules here, like uh, the glucose and large biomolecules, when you put it there, there's a chance that they're going to fragment. Okay, so there's a multiple charging in this uh, uh, thing that happened, but yung tawag doon, yung tinatawag natin, the uh, convolution. Okay, I, I, I think in, in the PowerPoint slide that I have you, there's a link in some of the slides that we have. I'm using the slides from Agilent. I think that's that that's the easiest way for you to, to, to understand, okay? Is when company try to sell their products to you, you want to present okay, the products in terms of layman, ter using layman terms, okay? Masyado kasi technical if you use the definition or yung tinatawag natin uh, how the instrument work, okay? Now, what happened here, so as you could see, may solvent sprayed on this nebulizer. So once they go there, there's a capillary that you have there. So that's where you're going to uh, ionize them and then usually separate them in terms of mass to charge ratio. So the, from the charge droplets, what happened is you're going to form these analyte ions, okay? So the, the nebulizer would form this uniform droplet size and then the charge droplets are attracted towards the dielectric capillary. So the heated nitrogen stream surrounding the capillary shrinks the droplets. And this is where the process called dissolvation takes place. And then the droplets continue to shrink until the repulsive uh, electrostatic or columbic force exceeds the drop, uh, droplet uh, cohesive, cohesive forces leading to droplet explosion okay so magli repeat yung process na yan so from here so there's the columb uh, columbic explosion so ang mayari meron kang solvent ion dun sa cluster and then mapukuha mo na yung analyte ion so dito na yung tinatawag na ion evaporation so in this case na ionize na yung sample mo okay so that's how uh, your elect electro spray work, okay? Now the other one, your APCI. Now, if you're going to look at the APCI, this is just the chemical ionization that we have discussed before, okay? So yung difference nito doon sa ESI here, your sample should be now in gas phase. So anong ibig sabihin yun? Meron kang parang vaporizer. Okay. There's a nebulizer, mag spray yung gagawin siya into droplets, but that droplets will be forming to gas phase due to the so-called heater. So the LC element passes a nebulizing needle, which creates a pine spray, and then these droplets are fully vaporized in a heated ceramic tube that's around 400 to 500 degrees. Celsius. It's still a liquid chromatography, pero okay. Uh, once na form shine to droplets, magpa pass through siya sa high temperature, forming its gas form. Okay. And usually you just use this APCI to low molecular weight for those are less polar or non polar compounds. Okay. Typically analyzed by the so-called no, uh, normal phase chromatography. So that's why its application is not as wide as the ESI, okay? So if you're going to look how the APCI process happen, so ito yung sample mo, okay? <clears throat> so you evaporate them since it forms into gas form. So once you evaporate your sample, it is in the vapor form. Okay, so this is the only time that it starts to ionize. 
after evaporation and after the reagent gas is ionized. So meron kang reagent gas doon. Okay? The charged reagent gas would form and then the reagent gas transfers a charge to the analyte and typically uh, APCI generates just singly charged ions. However, it is possible to get doubly charged ion when the chains or charge sites are held apart, usually by hydrophobic uh, region. So the main objective usually of these uh, ion sources is just to make your sample into charged ions. Y yun lang yung main, uh, we could say, objective nitong part no mass spec. Okay? And once they are charged, it's easy for them to determine its mass. Okay? Now, yung photo or APPI, atmospheric pressure photo ionization, you still have the HPLC inlet, you still have the nebulizer, and just like your APCI, meron kang tinatawag na heater. Okay? So, droplets are fully uh, vaporized in a heated ceramic tube, then the gas vapor mixture passes through the UV light of a cryptom lab to ion, ionize the sample molecules, and the sample ions are then introduced in the capillary. Okay? So, the APPI is applicable to many of the same compounds as that typically analyzed by APCI. And it is, uh, we could say, proven particularly viable, uh, valuable for analysis of nonpolar aromatic uh, compounds. Okay, and how does this uh, APPI process form? So if you're going to look at the APCI, similar siya at the beginning here, pero ang, ang, ang difference lang is meron kang light. That's why, that's why it's a photo ionization. Okay? You just substitute a uh, lump for the corona needle for ionization instead of using the chemical reagent doon sa APCI. Okay? So they use an additional solvent and the mobile phase called the dopant to assist the uh, photo ionization process. So you can have a direct one wherein you just use the uh, light, okay? Or you can have this dopant, okay? There's still light, but there's a dopant with it. So this vapor producing into uh, uh, analyte or ionized analyte to the presence of light, or to the presence of light and dopant, okay? But I think the end goal here is you still produce this charge ion. Now, there's another one that they have. This is what we call the multi-mode ionization. So if you have this multi-mode ionization, that means it can have the APCI and the ESI, okay? So it, it can incorporate the two electrically separated optimized zone, one for ESI and one for APCI. I told you before that we have a mass spec system where you can choose either to use ESI or APCI as your ion source. Ito yung tinatawag na multi-mode, okay? So during the simultaneous APCI, but the difference with this one, you can uh, put the source together at the same time. Yung ginagamit ko kasi, uh, either APCI lang or ESI. You, you just change it depending on the need, okay? So when you use both of these, uh, what we call the multi-mode system, the ions from both ionization modes enter the capillary and are analyzed simultaneously by the mass spectrometer, okay? So this MMI or the multi-mode ion is used, useful for screening of the unknowns or whenever samples contain a mixture of compounds where some response by ESI and some response by APCI because you still don't know what the compound is. Hindi mo alam kung siya ay polar or non-polar. That's why you put, you, you use both modes, okay? So to help you identify, or we could say, determine the structure of the given sample. So question, before we go with the others, 
Tanong? Uh, I'm not surprised if this is the first time for you to hear this term, but I, I think with the way that the world is uh, being developed, some of you might be working with this instrument in the near future, okay? Because right now they try to make, uh, to develop a portable mass spectrometer. I, I met uh, his, uh, the pioneer of this, uh, Dr. Graham Cooks from Purdue. Okay, so he's trying to develop mass spec. Ang ano nga doon, minsan paper mass spec yung tawag niya. Uh, ano lang naman dito is yung ion source and then the mass analyzer. Once you develop that, you can uh, have your own uh, mass spectrometry. Okay? Tanong, before we go with the solid one, or still the solution, yung tinatawag na MALDI. So MALDI is still, uh, we could say, uh, as one, one, one type of ion source. Okay? So ang um, complete term nitong MALDI is matrix-assisted laser desorption ionization. Now, there's a MALDI in the other school that I'm working, uh, York College. And the way I, I use it is we use a matrix. We put our sample in that matrix and then it will analyze the sample that we have. And just like ESI, this is what? A soft ionization method. Okay. So the way that you do this is you have a sample, you mix it with the matrix and then apply it in a metal plate. So the matrix that we use during that time is we have the CHCA, cyano uh, hydroxynamic acid. Okay. So we, we put our analyte there, go on some matrix na yun, tapos na, naka metal plate siya. So once we put our sample in the metal plate, we put it in the mass spec. So there's a pulse laser that irradiates the sample, triggering ablation and desorption. Okay. So yung, pag nag hit yung laser beam doon sa sample mo, the, 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 your sample is usually in the matrix. Okay. So the matrix ion and the analyte ion are formed. So the analyte molecules are ionized in the hot plume of the ablated gases. And then the ions are accelerated into the mass spectrometer. Now, where do you use it? Usually in large molecules. Okay. Yung gaya ng DNA, protein, sugar, or large uh, organic molecules. So we use MALDI in peptides. Because the other lab I'm working is uh, what we call a, bio, a biochemistry lab. So what we do is we, we, we want to determine if the peptides that we synthesize is correct. Okay. Usually ang ginagawa namin is, let's say, this is a peptide. So the way that we check, we start with uh, this, uh, uh, what do you call this, amino acid. Okay. And then we attach each amino acids in doing this peptide synthesis. So in the end, we want to check if we get the right peptide. And the way that we use it, since MALDI is available in the uh, college or in the school, we use MALDI to check if we synthesize correctly the peptide. And sometimes we could say, uh, we, we get mass to charge ion that is far from the one that we're looking for. So that means mali yung synthesize namin. Okay? Because that's just the way we try to determine if we cor uh, correctly synthesize our peptide. So maldi yung ginagamit namin. So we look for the uh, mass to charge ion. Okay, no peptide. Now, the other one that I told you, the ICP, the inductively coupled plasma. So it can be ICP AES, ICP OES, like what Mamigo said, Mambiki, and then ICP MS, and then the ICP RIE. 
So what happened here in the inductively coupled plasma instrument, they use a plasma source in which the energy is supplied by electric currents. Okay. And the, uh, which are produced by the electromagnetic radiation that is by time varying magnetic field. So may plasma can be uh, involved dito. So the plasma is so energetic, it reduces the molecules to ionize elements. So the plasma is the one that ionize your elements. So it, 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 it targets the elements, okay? Not really the molecules. And there are different ICP geometries available coupled to different technologies. So yung AES, atomic emission, yung optical emission, and then yung mass spec. And then you also have the reactive ion uh, etching, okay? So here, it just shows you the uh, interrelationship of the various component in hyphenated ICP MS. So usually, yung pag tinatawag na hyphenated, it's made up of a separation system and or a separation technique and a detection system. So it could be HPLC, GC, capillary, electrophoresis, and other stuff. Okay. So that's the so-called ion sources. So Jan, 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 we could say one way to differentiate your mass spec depending on the ion uh, source. Now, the other way we can differentiate mass spec is the analyzer, okay? So your ion source nothing, it makes ions from our sample molecules, okay? Why do they make it into ions? Because ions are easier to detect than neutral molecules, okay? Now, in terms of this uh, mass analyzer, so what happened here? So this is after your molecules has been already converted into ions. So the next thing that they're going to do is they try to determine what's the mass of the ions that you have. So generally, papas of your mass analyzer. Okay. So after the ionization and ion transport, the analyte enters the mass analyzer. And the mass spectrometer measures the ion signals resulting in mass spectra, which can provide valuable information about molecular weight, structure, identity, and quantity of compound. Okay. At dito papasok yung tinatawag natin single quad, triple quad, time of flight, and the ion trap. Okay. So the, the, the one that I use is this for quantitation and this one for structure elucidation. Although I'm going to discuss them one by one. Okay. So if you're going to look at this uh, mass analyzer, they can separate ions based on their mass to charge ratio. Okay. Now, common features we could have about this is the presence of a high vacuum system. So, most of this uh, mass analyzer, okay. If you're going to look at it, they operate under high uh, vacuum. Why? Okay. To keep the ions from bumping into gaseous molecules. Okay. So remember, you, you still have what we call your gas molecules there. Lalo na pag nag convert yung gas molecules mo into ions. So there's still the presence of the gas molecules there. But if 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 you operate under high vacuum, it prevents the bumping of the ions into the gas molecule, okay? And it is here in the mass analyzer that you actually measure the mass to charge ratio of the ions, okay? 
So how do they differ? Maybe we could say they differ in terms of resolution, mass measurements, and yung tinatawag natin accuracy and sensitivity. Yung iba nga, uh, what, what we call, ito yung talagang basis nila why they use a certain mass analyzer. Okay? So, let's go to each of them. So, we, we go with the simplest one, yung tinatawag natin single quad. So, if you have a single quad, uh, mass analyzer. So the way that your uh, it works is the charged ions generated in the ion source enter the mass analyzer. So in it, you have a quadruple mass analyzer and it's can sequentially that only a single ion mass to charge may be passed at one time and all other ions are lost. Okay. So if you're going to look at this quadruple, uh, you you're talking quadruple na ano dito. So this is your ionization source. So papasok na siya sa mass analyzer. So when it detects the mass to charge ratio, isa isa lang yung pumapasok doon. And the way that you look at this, jan pumapasok yung mass to charge ratio. Usually it's just the mass of an ion, uh, which we put in terms of daltons in ter in, uh, instead of grams per mole, okay? So you, you, yung mass of ions mo divided by the number of charges on the ion. Now, the only information that you can get there here is the mass spectrometry, okay? So it's either your single ion monitoring or yung tinatawag nating scan mode. So uh, ano yung pagkakaiba nitong dalawa? This is used for quantitation. Now, in single ion monitoring, you already know your target compound. So all you need to do is, I want to detect this uh, mass to charge ions compound, we, uh, compounds with this mass to charge ion. So ang ano doon, detect lang niya kung ano yung sinet mo. Now, wh why do you know the mass to charge ion? Because you already know what you're targeting. So this is the one that you use, single ion monitoring, if you try to develop a method to analyze, let's say, the content of anti a certain antibiotics in an environmental sample or a certain biomarkers that is related to a disease in biological sample. Okay? So in an SIM, there's a target ion with specific ma mass to charge re uh, ratio that is monitored. And SIM on a single quad permits the best sensitivity for quantitation. However, it lacks specificity. Okay? Kasi ang ano nun, imamonitor niya lahat ng mass to charge ratio na sinet mo. Paano kapag merong compound na pareho yung mass to charge ratio? So hindi, hindi niya madidistinguish yun sa SIM. Okay? Now in the scan mode, what it do is, it scan all the samples. So we could say, I want to scan from 200 mass to charge ions until 500. So lahat ng ano doon, papasok, ibibigay sa'yo yung uh, abundance nila, yung relative abundance ng different mass to charge ions from that range. So you're scanning. So ito yung parang tinitinan mo, anong meron yung sample na yun? Maybe you can use it in preliminary uh, what we call data. You, you want, let's say, to analyze a certain system. The, the, uh, I, I think the, the experience that I have here, I have this sludge and I want to determine what happened if I add like an ox, uh, oxidizer, like the NEM, met, uh, and ethyl uh, malamide. And from what I see, in this, when I scan it, I saw some uh, what we call mass to charge ions, 
that increase in abundance when I applied that certain uh, compound. So yun yung tinatawag nating scan mode. So usually that's the first step that you do. And then you try to uh, elucidate the structure that it has. So yan yung kaya gawin ng single quad. Okay? Either you do uh, SIM or a scan mode. Now, must better kung meron kang triple quad. Okay? So pag meron kang triple quad, ito yung parang three times noon sa single quad mo. So pag dumaan yung master charge ion mo, dadaan yan doon sa quadruple uh, filter mo three times. Okay? So the charge ion generated in the ion source enter the mass analyzer. Then the analyzer is consists of three quadruples. And because of that, marami kang modes of operation. Okay? Hindi lang yung tinatawag na SIM tsaka scan mode. Okay? So a common set that happened here, sa first quadruple, it uses filter for specific mass to charge or the precursor ion. And then... Doon sa second quadruple, it uses a collision cell to fragment the precursor ion and generate the product ion. And then in the third quadruple, you set the specific mass to charge or SRM or MRN or scan B, uh, what we call mode, the product ion. So ginagawa mo dito, you don't only do mass spec. You use this so-called tandem mass spec. Mass spec, mass spec. Okay? So dito... Papasok na yung kulang sa single quad na specificity. Because for me, like the example that I have gave you, like I, I have a 4445, right? And then I have the, the 427. So what I do when I, I use the quadruple, the triple quadruple, I can use both mass to charge ion. So hindi lang yung 445 ni scan niya, i-scan pa niya yung 427. So we could say this is the MS and this is the MSMS. -MS. And you have a lot of stuff that you can do with the triple quad. Okay? You can have the multiple reaction monitoring, which is a MRM. And we could say here, okay, it's really a, a very sensitive method and used for quantitation. So pag meron kang triple quad, mas better to kaysa doon sa single quad. And this is the, uh, I, I don't know if Ma'am Vicky was able to use this one <laughs> uh, in Dr. Aga's lab. Ma'am, nagamit niyo ba to? <laughs> Hindi ko na matandaan eh. <clears throat> Ito Pero sobrang nasa... daming MS doon eh. Talaga yeah. maki... Kasi dalawa lang mo yung LC nila. <laughs> uh -oh. Yung isa is ion trap na paano ko ba anuhin to? Ito yung malapit sa pinto kapag okay, galing uh -oh. ka sa 5 o 6. Tapos uh -oh. isa po, galing sa pinto, galing doon sa same room, doon sa radioactive area. <laughs> uh, the soul, yung ion trap lang na nagamit ko, yung Agamit malapit sa pinto. I was able to use this one. I tried to monitor the uh, what we call the antibiotic. So you can use the MRM for quantitation and then also the so-called uh, MSMS. So ito yung para nag structure elucidation ka na. Okay. So usually if you do a structure elucidation, it's less sensitive compared to on the quantitation. That's why I told you, if you try to develop method, usually you use the one for quantitation. Pag alam mo na yung target molecule mo eh. Pag hindi mo alam, mag scan ka muna tapos i-try mo, i-characterize yung i-scan mo. So, let's say you see a mass to charge ratio that, like this one. So you look at the fragments. So ang gagawin mo, i-input mo yung mass to charge ratio ng fragment mo at it mas magpa-fragment pa yun into little fragments. So parang nakikita mo talaga, okay, ito yung parts na nagpa-fragment Okay, when you do an MSMS. So you yun yung experience ko. Now another one that you have is the ion trap. I told you I have also experience here. Okay. So in the ion trap, 
the way that you have here, the charge ion generated in the ion source entered the mass analyzer. Now, what happened here, okay, all ions of the selected polarity over the selected mass rate can be stored at once in the trap. So, parang itatrap, kay, itatrap niya yun. Okay? Now, the ions can be manipulated in the ion trap mass analyzer performing multiple isolation and fragmentation stages until time to detect. Okay? So, instead of using those four parallel loads, yung ion traps consist of a singular ring uh, electrode plus two end caps that form a trap. Yeah, I remember when I graduate, uh, the UB where Mambiki went, Mambiki went after me. So by the time, he, she, they're using already the so-called Orgi trap, which is a much better ion trap than the system that I was working when I was there at UB. Okay? So ito yung in noon. And I, I, I think we tried to uh, ask for a, a proposal or a grant proposal. This is around uh, 500,000 uh, okay, dollars yung price, but I think it went down until to 300K by now. Kasi yun yung parang high end around 2010. Okay? And UB was able to get something from the Obama stum stimulus plan uh, during that time, and they were able to do this one. Now, the orbit trap or the ion trap that you have, this is usually used for structure elucidation. So ang gagawin niya, since alam, uh, yung unang ginagawa nga dito is you scan first. Okay? I think they, they have a thing here. So the way that the ion trap works is maybe you scan. And then in scanning, you will see, okay, I have a mass to charge ratio. Okay? That's always there. Let's say I'm trying to identify a certain product that is formed when I added a chemical in a biological system. So from that, once I inject the ion and accumulate or complete, the ion gate closes and the ions are no longer rejected into the mass analyzer. So the waveforms are applied to eject the masses above and below the precursor ion. And then what happened? Okay, you can fragment the precursor ion. So Mas maganda itong ion trap kaysa doon sa uh, triple quad. Okay? Kasi ito, ito, yung, ito lang yung talaga yung nature niya eh. It's for structure elucidation. And if you compare this to quantitation compared to the sing, uh, triple quad, I think you, it's better to use the triple quad for quantitation. Okay? So once you see the precursor ion there, yeah, isolate the ion trap, the next thing that you do is fragmentation. So generally, yung pumapasok na yung MSMS, yung tam tandem. Minsan nga, MSMS, MS. So you're trying to break down yung fragment until ma-identify mo, oh, lahat ito nanggaling dito sa parent compound or yung precursor ion. Okay? That's how I was able to identify that there's a conjugate that form between glutathione and the N-ethylmalamide that I use. Okay. At yan din yung ginamit ko when I try to determine what happened to the tetracycline. Because the problem with the tetracycline is so unstable, it forms a lot of compound. Okay. But whether you change the pH or you expose it to light, ganun siya ka sensitive. Okay. Now, the last one, which I never use, <laughs> this is the so called time of flight. TOF. Okay. So here the charge ion generated in the ion source enter the mass analyzer. So you mass analyzer mo yung TOF. Ganun siya kalaki. <laughs> okay. So a meron ito, meron kang mass filter, which is a quadruple. And then you have a flight tube. Yan yung papawag na at uh, time of flight at yung collision cell. Yun yung QTOF. So the way it do is after the ions have passed through the quadruple or the collision cell, they arrive at the ion pulsar. Okay, ito yung ion pulsar. So ito yung ion source, papasok dito yung sample mo. Okay, so once they pass through the ion pulsar, so they have a high voltage of light which accelerate the ions into the flight tube. So dyan siya papasok yung flight tube na yan. 
Okay? And then an ion mirror at the end of the tube reflects the ions and sends them to the detector that records their time of arrival. Kaya nga, flight. Okay? So parang palili pa rin mo yung ion mo dun. Tapos imamonitor nila gano katagal yung time of arrival. And the way that it, uh, it gives you is it, if you have a cute, uh, uh, just the time of flight, it's just the mass spec. But if you have the cute top, which is make it more expensive, pwede kang mag mass spec or di kaya tandem mass spec. And the way that it works, hindi ko na ano yun, kasi may mga formula na ginagamit eh. Because you're trying to determine the, the time of flight, the flight distance ng sample mo. And usually what does the equation says here, the, the, the flight time for each mass is unique and is determined by the energy to which an ion is accelerated, the distance it has to travel and the mass to charge ion. Okay? So ang sinasabi lang dito, uh, for a given kinetic energy, smaller masses will have greater velocities. So ano ibig sabihin nito? Yung light molecules, they travel faster compared to the heavier molecules. So I think that's the way they separate the mass to charge ion. Okay? Kung gaano katagal yung flight. So pag mas mabigat ka or mas uh, higher yung molecule, uh, mass to charge ratio mo, mas matagal yung time of flight mo. Y yan yung principle na ginagamit dito. I, I saw uh, the instrument but I never used this thing because mahal siya eh. Okay? And they usually use it for big molecules. Like uh, what we call protein. Sometimes they use MALDI. Uh, ang ano nito is MALDI top. Okay? Yan yung ginagamit namin doon. Okay? Uh, ang familiar lang ako sa MALDI, I now realize that the mass analyzer of the MALDI that we have is the time of flight. Okay? They're in uh, York College. Ang problema nga down ngayon kasi after uh, with the pandemic, hindi nagagamit. So, that's a problem with the instrument, especially the high end. As much as possible, you have to use it from time to time. Or else, once nag start yung problem, sunud sunud na yan eh. Okay? So, I'm not going to discuss to you the thing, but the, the principle of the time of flight is the lighter the molecule, the shorter is the time of flight. So the heavier molecule, the what we call the uh, <clears throat> longer is the time of flight. Okay. So the, the thing that you know is the mass spec and the MS MS. So ano ba yung pagkakaiba nitong dalawa? So if you have an MS MS, it just means you use two mass analyzer that are usually combined in one instrument and the way that you do is you select an analyte or an ion from a mixture then generate the fragments uh, from it to give the structural uh, information okay ang, ang tawag dyan eh, tandem mass spectrometry now if we're going to look at some of the mass spectrum that comes out, so if you have this single quadruple mass analyzer, so this is from an antibiotic that I usually use, sulfamethacin. So this is a, a sulfa drugs. So if you're going to look at this, this is the structure. Okay. So if you're going to look at the molar mass of it, it is 279. And you will see. That's the mass abundance, mass to charge ratio. Okay, and then you can find uh, one at 280. That's just m plus h plus. Or you can also find one at 301. So that's the uh, mass plus the sodium ion. Okay, and then this one is from a Q-top mass analyzer. It's coca ethylene. So what can you say? Okay. Dito sa Q-top, ang, ang makikita mo dito yung tinatawag nating uh, total ion chromatogram. This is different from this. Here, this is already the so-called mass spectra. Okay. 
Now, in the total ion chromatogram, usually, ang tinitingnan mo dito, usually, you have time and then signal. So, parang yan yung chromatogram mo. And then, what you do, when you hit one of them, ito yung lalabas. Yung tinatawag nating mass spectra. So, here, talagang straightforward dito yung uh, tinatawag nating mass to charge ion. So, talagang very sharp. But if you have this time of flight, makikita mo hindi siya parang isang line lang na ganito. It's like a chromatogram. Okay? But this is still a mass spectrum. Hindi siya yung total ion chromatogram na meron tayo. Kasi uh, if you're going to look at the resolution no tinatawag nating total ion chromatogram, it can be like this or like this one. So question dito, alin yung mas maganda yung resolution? Yung A or yung B? Pag nagtanong ako sa, ng ganyan sa quiz. Which one is a better resolution? Yung A or yung B? Anyone? Isa lang ang sumagot eh. Si CJ lang. So between the two, okay, this is a better resolution. Kasi ito parang, oh yeah, yeah, meron pala dito eh, single quad versus the high rest time of flight. Okay? So yung normal, the analysis with a single or a triple, quadruple, usually they deliver this nominal mass information. Okay? So hindi siya high rest, uh, ano siya, low resolution siya, low resolving power, unlike the time of flight. So if you're going to look at this, masyado siyang broad dito. Okay? So yung resolution nito, lower compared to this one kasi dito talagang specific yung target mass na meron ka. Okay? So yan yung advantage nung time of flight. Kaya mahal. <laughs> okay? So the continuous calibration of a TOF uh, system is needed for time of flight analysis to ensure the best possible mass accuracy. So if you have an instrument, you also have to maintain it. And during the time, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, we have to uh, replace the pump oil every three months. Okay? And we have to clean also our source, I think every month. Kasi ang mangyayari, kapag hindi mo maki-clean yun, some contaminants from the previous sample that you used will stay there. And it will affect the signal that, that the uh, instrument will generate. So with sufficient mass resolution and mass accuracy, uh, time of flight mass spectrometer can possibly confirm this so-called elemental composition. Okay? And then if you're going to compare them, so ito yung mass spectrum ng single quad. Ito yung typical mass spectrum ng time of flight. Now look at how accurate they are. Dito 0.1. Okay? Dito meron kang 0 0.0116, 0 0.0242. So talagang yung number ng decimals na meron ka sa time of flight mas madami kaysa doon sa single quad or triple quad. Okay. Now, another thing that you can look at is the so-called multiply, uh, multiply charge ions and yung tinatawag na deconvolution. So depending on the analyzed molecule and the ionization technique, multiple charge ions can be generated. So yung small molecules na ginagamit sa APCI, they usually deliver sa single charge molecules. So the way that you look at it, the measure mass to charge uh, uh, ion corresponds to the molecular weight after subtracting, okay? Uh, if you have a positive ion or adding the negative ion, the charge carrier. So me meron kasi, pag nagmamass spec ka, meron tinatawag na positive mode tsaka negative mode. So uh, ano yung ibig sabihin nito? So pag positive mode ka, may ina-add ka na parang positive ion. Pag negative mode ka, usually may sinasubtract kang ion. 
Now, it depends on the sample whether you use the positive or a negative mode. But usually what happens, so let's say kung yung target mass to charge ion mo is 345. So if you use a positive mode, you always have a 346, that's plus H, or kung ano man yung 345 plus Na. Now, if it's a negative mode, ang hahanapin mong mass to charge ion is a minus one. That's a minus of the hydrogen or a minus of the Na. Okay. Usually, you do it at the beginning of the analysis. Kung wala kang idea kung ano yung hinahanap mo. <laughs> and you want to see which one is better. Is it the positive mode or the negative mode? Well, it depends. Okay. Usually, if you use a positive mode, you, you add some uh, compounder. Usually, sodium ion. Okay. It's a good uh, positive mode thing. Now, if you have these large molecules, so that's the peptides and the proteins, you ionize it with the ESI. So you can have more than one potential charge site for protonation and deprotonation. And it's available, which can result in multiple charge ion. And this makes large molecules like antibody that, that's more than what? Uh, one uh, million uh, Dalton, accessible to mass spectrometry since the measured ions are shifted to more readily uh, measure mass to charge range. And the way that they do, they use this process of the convolution. So it's a mathematical algorithm that's needed to determine the real molecular weight from the measured mass to charge ion. Masyado nga mabilis na ngayon compared to the time that I'm doing mass spec per se. Kasi noon, uh, we have to, it's just like uh, looking for a needle in a haystack. Pero ngayon, with the advent of this, what we call software, okay, you can just input your results and the software itself will analyze. If you want to say, hey, I want to look at the difference between this condition and then these conditions, that ito yung uh, mass spectrum mo or yung uh, tinatawag nating total ion chromatogram. And it will give you the results right away. Okay? So the way that they do this deconvolution, so lalabas yan ganyan. So you can expect this from big molecules. And each of them has a signature, okay? For a particular, let's say, peptide or amino acid. So it's easier with the software. All you need to do is input yung, so yung, yung total ion chromatogram mo and it generate na niya kung ano yung uh, compound na meron doon or if it's a peptide, ano yung amino acids na meron like this one, glutamine synthetase. So there's a, what we call the, a, a certain uh, mass to charge ion that will come out to it if they do this deconvolution. So ito yung parang mass spec na lumabas. Pag dineconvolate mo yan, lalabas talaga kung ano yung uh, uh, protein or peptide na nag-generate ng ganitong fragments or mass spectra. So it's, it, it, it's uh, we could say, the advent of computation okay, makes, we could say, research in uh, mass spectrometry easier. Kaya nga, very common siya in using uh, proteomics. Okay? And these are just some of the stuff that we use, the common abbreviation. And as I told you, all, all, all this stuff comes from Agilent. And I try to show you, sana makuha ko yung, meron kasi kami paper. That I work with another uh, Filipino base here. Kaka ano lang, publish lang. So, I just like to share to you. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Raplosia. Familiar ba kayo sa Raplosia? Like this one. I never seen this one, but what happened here is there's there's this uh Filipino or uh, uh, UP Diliman grad. So, um, school niya is uh, Long Island University. 
And I think during the pandemic last time, so she was looking for someone to help her differentiate. Ano yung difference ng raplosia na infected at uninfected? Kasi itong raplosia, ano siya, yung tinatawag natin parasitic plant. Okay? It lives through the help of other, another organism. So he had, she had some mass spec that she wants to analyze. And what we have is there's a public uh, domain software that all we need to do is we put all our total ion chromatograms and it will generate what's the difference, okay? So yung ginawa namin, yung binigay niya sa akin yung results. I didn't even run the results, okay? It was already generated from his uh, her analysis. So when when we input that results, it will show you the difference. So sabi natin, namin, oh, ito yung mga elevated na compounds when the raplosia was infected okay, with the tetrastigma. Tapos, nakikita, nakita namin doon sa software na lumalabas, oh, ito yung tumaas. Pag parang minix namin, so maybe they using like a subtraction. So nakita namin elevated yung mga compounds na to. And we try to discuss about what's happening on, on, on that uh, what we call thing. Uh, ano ba yung nangyayari yung ano? And we found out that some of the compounds that were identified as elevated, it was reported already. Okay? Na, na, nakikita tong metabolites na to doon sa ibang organism. So ito yung parang isang aspect na I think 10 years ago we're not able to do it. But with the advent of this uh, public domain na uh, software, paano natin, no? no mix, no mix na rin to eh. We're able to see the difference. So, so yan yung ano ngayon eh, yung direction. How they use mass spec to, to, to what we call the study, the biological system. It's really a very, we could say, good field. That's why uh, I hope, I, I don't know if you heard, but I think Dr. Completo is trying to get a mass spec to, to be installed in UPLB. I don't know what's the latest about it. So that's all about the mass spec. So anong gagawin natin ngayong weekend? Please ulit. <laughs> Anyone So break muna. <laughs> because next meeting on Tuesday, we will start with electrochem. So I still have the 4.5 module. And then siguro dito sa, if ever we're going to have a quiz here in Mastec, dalawang quiz lang dito. So this is the module five. So I think okay ba sa inyo yung ginawa natin last weekend, yung chinap natin siya? Five questions per quiz, 30 minutes. Okay ba yun? Kaysa yung, I think, yung isang quiz na meron tayo na worth 60 points. Because the okay on, naman yung scores nila. <laughs> oh, okay naman. <laughs> So, mas, mas okay nga yung chap-chap yung... eh. Kasi yung 60 points ata, ang highest is 57 lang eh. Walang naka 60 over 60. I think that's module 3 part 2. Pero yung pong apat na quiz na, yung isa 18 points tapos yung iba 15-15. And it was really designed na mas harder yung later quiz. <laughs> Mas pababa yung overage niya. Maybe the weekend also. Catch you there. <laughs> so question. Ito yun na yung ano natin sa mass spec. And I hope even though you're not familiar with the system, you learn something. And I can assure you that you're going to encounter them. Kasi I think ito na yung trend ngayon nung... Uh, advancement na meron tayo and I will not be surprised maybe year or 
years from now, halos lahat ng love dyan sa Pinas, eh, meron na rin uh, mass spec. It's hard to maintain an instrument like that. That's why we have a very good uh, proposal. Ang, ang always question sa amin is the maintenance. Okay? So we, uh, my colleague proposed for this 500K orbit trap, I think 2013. Maganda yung, ano, yung review. Okay? Yung isa nga excellent. But the problem is they always ask how to maintain it. One is you need to have this so-called uninterrupted nit liquid nitrogen. Okay. So doon sa LB, uh, sa, sa, sa UB, we always have every week <laughs> the liquid nitrogen that we need to deliver. But when I moved to your college, what, what the department did is they have their own liquid nitrogen generator. So nasa basement yun. Okay. So ginagawa nila, they don't have to ask for delivery. Okay. Because I remember, I think mom, mom also knows that. I think every week, oh, may deliver na. No. But I think later, may liquid generator na rin ata sa Agalab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sabi nga namin, oh, laking tipid yun. <laughs> the thing is, you have to be there. Somebody has to be in the lab when the tank of liquid nitrogen has to be there. And it's a big tank. <laughs> And you have to have that to, to maintain this high vacuum and high voltage system. Kailangan talaga yan pag may mass spec ka. Kaya nga, yun yung sabi ko dun sa colleague ko. Alam mo, the structure that we have, the door is not even uh, big enough for the tank of liquid nitrogen to be pitted. So if we're going to push through here, I think we have to change some of the infrastructure. <laughs> Y yun yung ano eh, yung parang maganda yung idea mo, but the reviewer will also look at what is the long term. Ay ayaw kasi nila na, okay, bibigyan ka ng kalahating million, tapos after three years, wala na. Okay? Because they want not only you, but also the surrounding around you to gain something from the money that is given to you. Y yun yung ano eh, yun, yun yung main ano dito. I remember for two years, I'm trying to get this uh, Raman microscopy. And then it was, we could say, uh, fair last year. And then this year, it's good. And then I told them, no, we're not going to get this. Because the question being asked is not the research that is covered by me. It's the research covered by my colleague. And I said, I really don't have any idea how to answer them because I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> Pero pag PI ka, dapat alam mo yun. E, ano nga, yung parang kasi gusto nila makita how to do it. Hindi lang yung what are you going to do it. So, so dun yung parang nahihirapan. Sabi ko nga, tinan mo yung lahat ng research natin, lusot. Pero dito sa dalawang to, hindi. Kaya sabi ko, mag-a-apply ulit tayo this year but not the microscope one, but just the, the, the downgrade one. And we just expand what we have proposed in the previous one. Kasi yung ano dito, yung isang ang question namin eh, oh, you need to have like a technician to take care of the instrument. Once it's what we call misaligned. And sinabi na sa akin no hori ba, no, you don't, need, you don't have a alignment issue for that. So that, that's the problem if you have a high-end instrument. And I don't know, I think, Kilala niyo, Ma'am, si Lennon? Yes, oo. Oh. Pagente? Nasa ano oh, pa rin ba siya? Sa Pasqual? Uh, well, ay, hindi. Ano na siya? Nagtayo na siya ng sarili niya service lab ah, sa Quezon. Ah, may service lab na rin. Parang si Buong Galing. <laughs> oh, so, nagwa-water quality, ano siya, water quality analysis. Mm -hmm. So, kasi, yung kanyang uh, wife kasi is medical doctor. Mm. Eh, siyempre, naka-assign sa Quezon. Ang hirap naman naka-assign siya sa Los Baños tapos mm -hmm. Quezon. So, nag-resign na siya sa Pascual and then nag-put mm -hmm. up siya ng sarili niya service lab. Water mm -hmm. quality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kasi ngayon, nire-required na ata nung, ano, di po ba, nung EMB. Basta yung requirement na lahat ng company merong ano yung magpas ng water analysis. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, ang mga client niya, mga ano, refilling stations eh. Mm -hmm. Kasi hindi re regulation eh. Parang mm -hmm. pagka microbiological analysis, parang 
monthly tapos yung chemical analysis parang quarterly. Kaya nag-ano din siya, nagputa din siya ng micro lab kasi yun ang madalas eh, monthly monitoring so, yun eh. Parang lang ako Jeff Core, di po ba? <laughs> parang ganun, parang Jeff Core. Oh. Si, si ma'am ano, nagsimula doon sa NCPC. <laughs> oo, oo. Because I remember during doon po sa BS ko, I worked with Ma'am Tejada, uh, Ma'am Mel. So nagpa-analyze kami nung fraction nung solvent fraction nung NIM3 ko doon sa uh, okay. sa Jet Core. But I think right now, noon parang isang isang ano lang sila eh, isang room ngayon yata isang building. <laughs> isang tagi. building na sila. <laughs> And then marami, meron silang ano, uh, GCMS mm-hmm. for the pesticides. Tapos dalawa yon magkahiwala. Yung isa sa formulation, so yun yung matataas mm-hmm. sa concentration. Tapos yung isa sa mga pesticide residues. So mm-hmm. tapos meron na rin silang water quality, may micro oh, na rin siya. So na nag-expand na yung Jeff Core. <laughs> Siguro ang isang uh, takeaway message ko talaga dito is if you buy an equipment, lalo na itong mga high-end, kailangan isama mo sa budget yung preventive maintenance. Mm-hmm. Yun kasi yung mga nakikakaligtaan ng ibang bumili na equipment eh, na walang budget for preventive and maintenance every year. Kaya minsan, pag nasira, nakangangan na yung equipment. Uh-huh. Oo. Kaya it's important talaga na meron kang budget for preventive maintenance para yun, na-maintain yung equipment. Lalo yung mga high-end na yan, uh-huh. uh, mass spec. Oo. And, and you know what's the main problem sa LB? <laughs> <laughs> Oo. Yung brown out. <laughs> yung brown out. Oo nga eh. Hindi brown talaga masisira lagi, talaga. Ha? Brown out pa rin lagi. <laughs> Pagka summer, talagang uh, nagba-brown out. Yeah, I remember sa first day nag-report ako kay mom. <laughs> brown out. Mm-mm. And it's Problema not good you have an instrument. I remember, I think we have an IR. Sa IC to ha. They have to have two aircons because they have to maintain a certain temperature. So, nangyari, one aircon is working one at a time. So, pag, pagod na yung isa, i-off nila, tas i-on nila yung isang aircon. But I, I don't think the instrument still exists by that time. It was new, uh, I think, when I was in my senior year. I, so, ngayon, may, may, bago silang, may bago silang IR. Nakuha ni Kevin Marquez sa project ah, niya. Oh. Oh. <laughs> So yun yung meron sila sa IC, yung top of the line ng Shimadsu. Yung merong ano, ATR, yung automated pulse reflectance. Anda, sabi nga namin dito eh, kung pwede ko lang ipadala because we always get something from FDA. So ang ano nga lang doon, oh meron kayo, interesado. We have four ATR. <laughs> Sabi ko, tig-isa na tayo dito doon sa mga kulit ko. Ha? Akin to, kung, kung gusto ninyo do, doon kayo para iba yung, sabi ko, sige kayo, makontaminate yung sample nyo kasi I'm using always the B product. So, ang ginagawa ng estudyante ko, like, like this afternoon, uh, someone's analyzing the pollen. Uh, a month ago, someone's analyzing the uh, honey. So, sabi ko, siguro duwi mo, linisin niyan kasi sticky. So, since ATR kasi po ano eh yung i-i-i-jump i-i-fit mo yung sample <laughs> sa sa plate mm-hmm. niya. So sabi ko, make sure you clean it properly because you might mm-hmm. contaminate it. So parang yun yung ano namin and it is Perkin Elmer karamihan mm-hmm. and we use Spectrum. Yep. So question. <laughs> Gutom na ata ang mga bata. Oh. <laughs> So we're almost done. I mean, ilang linggo na lang tayo magmi-meet. <laughs> And then you will so, have your break. <laughs> halos ano, kasi ang meeting na lang natin is uh, lima, bali December 7, 9, 14, 16, at saka 21, yung last day. Pero baka sabihin ng mga batang to, patawarin nyo na yung last day na 21. <laughs> kasi I heard Marami talaga silang requirements kasi marami silang mga reports sa lab kasi merong may 140, 160.1, 111.1, tapos yung 137.1. Kaya talagang tambak yung kanilang reports, pre-lab, post-lab, full reports. Ayun. But yun, the show must go on eh. We, yeah. we need really an assessment eh. Kaya 
sana naintindihan naman nila that since pandemic, we really have to have an assessment. Mm-hmm. Kaya, mm-hmm. ayun. Tsaka we are trying to help them din naman kasi yeah. sa board exam, ma- mabibigay yeah. ang mass spec. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think that's that's the way. It, uh, I mean, you you yung po yung future eh. Kahit anong mangyari, I think. Ang ano nga ngayon, parang routinary na lang maspect. Noon, IR yung routinary. Ngayon, parang maspect na tapos ang gagawin noon, yung parang yung single quad, bago ka pumunta doon sa high resolution, o oh, check mo muna yan dyan. Tapos pag okay na, i-ano mo na sa, ano, sa high resolution. Okay? E yung iba pa nga is, I'm not sure if we're going to cover NMR. Because here in one of the college, CUNY uh, City College, build, isang building, puro NMR. <laughs> And NMR is much better than MASPEC. Okay? I, I'm trying to what we call uh, expose you to this because some of you might be studying here in yes. the near future. Oh, so parang man. hindi kayo pa katulad namin pa ang uh, oh, oh good to it. <laughs> you you can feel, you can feel uh, I mean I can feel my excitement when when, when we study. Oh, ano ito? <laughs> And even yung copy maker sa bahay hindi namin alam ni EG. Ano ba 'yan? <laughs> Kasi syempre yung iba nakikita ba lang sa libro pero mm-hmm. when you go to University at Buffalo, kung saan kami <laughs> nag-work ni Sir. Ah, talagang grabing equipment nila doon. And some lab needs people. Uh, mm-hmm. To tell you frankly, with Dr. Uh, Ruel de Samero lab, there are more instruments than people. <laughs> Kaya minsan pag pupunta ako doon, uh, I use at least three instruments uh, running at the same time. Because ang gagawin ko na naman, if I have the sample in one cubit, so from from one instrument i-transfer i- i- ko yun sa kabila tapos sa so masaya siya kasi sabi niya okay pa ano may nagamit ang instrument na yan because if you don't use it most likely it will just break down meron yang isang instrument doon yung lifetime fluorescence it was left there by a, a professor el- earlier the, the one that she re- he replaced and it was not used and then i tried to run it i said hindi na hindi na ata to nagraran kasi i use that kind of instrument when i was in grad school sabi ko ayaw magano yung source kasi sabi namin bumili kami ng led ayaw so sabi ko try mo natin laser e sabi namin ah mas masyadong matindi yung laser na galing sa raman so baka ma- maano yung pmp masunog <laughs> mm-hmm. so so that's the, that's the thing that that, that we have and i'm happy at least meron ng instrument na ano ngayon diyan sa LBN. I hope I, I don't know when the pandemic uh, problema ng amin yan. Dumating na sa amin yung Omicron eh. <laughs> It was just announced that there's cases in California uh, of the Omicron. Okay, that they said it's I, I don't think it's South Africa. They were just detected in South Africa, pero sa Europe siguro. <laughs> And I don't know, na-detect na ba diyan, ma'am? Hindi pa rin. Wala, wala pa. Hopefully, oh, hindi na sana pumasok. Kaya naka, may travel ban ang from South Africa. Eh. Then, ang problem nga namin ngayon dito, may mga, kasi since we came from Thanksgiving week, in my analytical ayun, class ayun. this week, I have 16 students, only eight showed up on Monday lecture. And then all of them said, we're not feeling well and we're waiting for our COVID test. Ang ano namin dito, Paano pag hindi na-detect sa COVID test yung Omicron? <laughs> y- yun yung ano namin, yung problem. Tapos sa faculty meeting nga kanina, sabi ng ibang faculty, nagdadaya yung mga student namin kasi meron kaming app and if, if you said that if you felt any symptoms, hindi ka na pwedeng pumasok. But I think some students are, are not truthful or honest to themselves, hindi nila sinasabi yung mga symptoms na yun. Kaya parang kinakabahan ako kanina sa lab. <laughs> Sabi ko, chat lang kayo. <laughs> Because a lot of them went back to their states and with the uh, advent of Omicron and you know, NYC is one of the center hub. Mm-hmm. So sabi nga namin, I think it's here. It's just a matter of time kung ma-identify nila. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so parang back to zero to if ever worse comes to worse. But hopefully, I said, 
the box. Kaya sabi ko, pipilitan na ako maghanap ng booster this week. <laughs> Just to be uh, prepared. Okay? Question class? So okay na sila sa quiz ulit this weekend. So okay na sa set. quiz or ano, sa Tuesday na lang? <laughs> Yung mga natitira. Ibet. <laughs> Si CJ. Ang problema, mga magagaling yun nandito eh. <laughs> Ang problema ko yung yung iba na, ewan. <laughs> ang, ang, ang hinihinala ko kasi I think some of them are not aware. So that's why they, when, when they learn about it, they have to take. I think some of you thought that isa lang yung quiz last weekend because I was surprised. Oh, mag-aalas 12 na. Hindi pa kumpleto yung second quiz. That's why I have to message you in in Facebook to remind you. Oh, may quiz tayo. Apat yung quiz natin. But I think everyone got the, the, the quiz, all of them. So that that's, that's I think, a very good one. Okay. So I, I think uh, break time, I might put a problem set uh, by the weekend. Well, it depends because if I have my booster tomorrow, we will see what will happen. <laughs> I hope uh, Lady Moderna will be okay with <laughs> okay, uh, me. I-announce ko na lang or i-email ko sa uh, what we call sa Google Classroom natin about it. Okay? But we still have to do the vibrational in spectroscopy and then the mass spec part. So if ever I put the problem set, it will not be, uh, the deadline will be maybe next week at the earliest. Okay, so siguro break lang muna tayo. Then maybe after Tuesday, we can start resuming the short quizzes again. Just to give you a chance to on sa iba yung course. I, I know uh, you uh, you might have PCHEM or organic analysis. Okay? So is that, uh, I think, a week for us? 